Welcome back to GFX Rider. Right today I'm doing a full course showing you how to use the Roblox starter rigs for Blender. I'll be showing you how to download and install it as well as importing rigs, setting up your textures, attaching accessories and all the different features and how to pose and just a whole course showing you how to use the starter rigs. If you didn't already know, the starter rigs have over 100,000 downloads at the time of recording and they're kind of the industry standard for Roblox Blender rigs. It has all of the different main body types you'll need to make GFX and it has a super awesome feature where it's actually an add-on that you can easily just import any rig you want in just a single click. But before we begin, I want to say that sometime next year in 2025, there will be a new version of the starter rigs coming out that's going to have a whole lot more features than it currently has, which I will definitely make an updated tutorial when that comes out. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that and make sure to subscribe for other Roblox GFX content as well. Check out gfxrunner.com for completely free Roblox GFX assets and let's jump right into the video. Starting off, you want to head over to softgb.gumroad.com and pick up the Roblox starter rigs. It'll also be linked in the description below and what you want to do is you want to come down to here and you want to type in zero to get it for free. Click I want this and it should take you to another page. Here you can add a tip if you do want to donate a little bit. I'm just going to do zero and then you want to type in your email address and click get. After that there will be two downloads right here. The starter rigs has a really nice feature where it lets you use HD faces so you can use any face you want on the rigs and they're already there all inside of the zip folder ready for you to use in a high quality resolution. Then of course there are the Roblox starter rigs themselves right here. So you want to download both of these files unless you don't really want to use the Roblox HD faces that is completely up to you but I will be showing you how to use them today so go ahead and download both of these. Once you've done that you want to right click on the Roblox HD faces.zip file and then click extract all. Click extract and it should extract all of the faces out into a new folder and now you'll see you'll have all of these different faces all inside of the Roblox HD faces pack. Now for the starter rig zip you can extract this and inside of here there'll be each of the blend files for each of the different rigs you might want to use but before you do that it's actually better you install it as an add-on. So instead of extracting the Roblox starter rig zip file right here you actually want to head into Blender and go up to edit, preferences, add-ons and then you want to click install right here. Then you want to locate the Roblox starter rig zip file right here and then click install add-on. After that's done it should pop up right here which you can then enable the add-on and close out of this Blender preferences menu. Now if you click N on your keyboard it should pop up this side menu right here where you should be able to find the starter rigs little tab right here and super easily you can click the select rig button at the side and then choose whichever rig you'd like to use. I'll be using the blocky rig today because the blocky rig actually has a super nice feature with the torso which I will show you how to use in just a second. I'm going to assume you already have exported your character out of Roblox Studio so now I'm going to show you how to import attach accessories and put on your texture and everything like that. The first thing we need to do is go into material preview mode at the top right here. This will let us be able to see the actual textures. As for actually applying the accessories you want to go up to the shading tab at the top of Blender which now you want to select any part of the rig and it should show you down in the shade editor right here your texture you have applied. So right here is the HD faces texture and right here is your main characters texture. To apply your characters texture you want to click the cross right here to delete the current texture and then you want to click open. Navigate to wherever you exported your character to and then you want to apply the characters texture just like that. So there you go you have your characters texture applied. If you don't want to use the HD faces you can select this whole little bit right here that says delete if you don't want to use the HD faces. Select it all just like that and click X on your keyboard to delete it. Then with the main texture you want to connect the colour up to the base colour and you'll just have your character there with whichever face you exported it out of Robot Studio with. But I will be showing you how to use the HD faces today so to actually use the HD faces you want to come down to the face texture here, delete the current one and then click open and you can probably already guess just navigate to where you got your Roblox HD faces. What you want to do is you actually want to click this one right here. This will display it in a grid which means you can actually preview all of the faces. This just makes it a lot easier to know which one you're choosing so you can choose which whichever one you want right here. Select it and then click open image or just double click on it. And you'll see now that that face is applied to your character and it is very, very high quality. We can now switch out of the shading tab in Blender. Now you won't just have your texture for your character, you also have all of the accessories. So I've imported all of my accessories here. He actually has a pair of pants that don't really fit. I won't be showing you how to do that today, but we do have a necklace and like a hat here thing right here that we can attach to the character. Now if we select the settings cog to select the whole character and then we just go into pose mode, 
like that, you'll see that there's all the different bones of the rig. Here, you can of course select each of them with the rotation tool, rotate them uh, however you'd like. You can move them around, pose them however you'd like. But of course, if you do pose the head, for example here, the accessories will not move along with it. So I'm gonna head out of pose mode and select my accessory here. This accessory will be connected to the head bone. And then this accessory here will be connected to the upper torso because of course it's the necklace and it is connected to the torso. So you can connect any accessory to any bone you'd like. If you've got a sword, you'd connect it to the hand bone here. If you've got like, I don't know, like a holster for a gun or something, you could connect it to the upper leg. But you wanna select your accessory and then I'm gonna shift click on the settings cog here. So you wanna select your accessory and then the rig just like that. You wanna make sure you select your accessory first and then the rig to make sure that it actually works. So the actual rig should be the last thing you select. You should now be able to go into pose mode here and select whichever bone you want to attach it to. So you can select the neck bone here and I'm gonna click control P and then we're gonna select bone. Of course, do the same thing for the necklace. Go back out of pose mode, select your next accessory, shift click on the rig, and then go into pose mode. I'm gonna be attaching this accessory here to the upper torso, so I'm gonna select that torso there, control P, and then bone. And you should be able to see now that when I move the upper torso, the necklace moves along with it. If I move the head, the um, hat in here moves along with that as well. So you could be done there. You pretty much have all the basics you need to know. You just select your rig, go into pose mode, and you can pose it up however you'd like. But you might be wondering, well, why is there the settings cost? What are these stars for? What are all the other features of the rig? Well, I'll get into those in just a second, but there's actually one more little feature that I mentioned before about only being on the blocky rig that I do want to show you. As I mentioned before, with the head being able to stretch with that bone, the same thing can actually be done with this bone right here, which stretches the torso, which actually gives you access to this really nice feature that I'll show on screen right now, where you can connect like a backpack or something up to your character. And when you bend the torso, it will actually stretch along with it. So before I show you this feature, I do just want to mention one more time that this does not work with any of the other rig types. I can't really remember exactly why, but possibly in the next version, it'll work with the other rigs, but it is a super nice feature. But yeah, once again, it sadly only works with the blocky rig. So to do this, you wanna do the same thing we did before with attaching the uh, accessories. So select your accessory, select the rig, go into pose mode. And then instead of connecting this to like the upper torso, which is where you'd usually connect it, you actually wanna connect it to the squiggly one right here, this lower torso that stretches. You wanna select that one and you wanna click control P and instead of doing bone, you actually want to do with empty groups. The last thing we need to do is go out of pose mode, back in object mode, select your accessory here, tab to go into edit mode, click A to select everything like that. And then you want to head into the little um, object data properties tab right here. And these will be all of the vertex groups that are available on the rig. You want to go ahead and find the torso bendy one right here. This is of course this bone here, the torso bendy bone. You want to select it. And then with all of the vertices selected like this, you can then click assign. What you see now is if I bend this upper torso, it actually stretches and warps along with the character, which is pretty useful because if it wasn't for that, you'd do what I've just done here and connect it to like the upper torso, which then has it. So it's like clipping through the character. It's still actually warping with it a bit. I did it wrong, but you get the point. You would, you'd have to attach it to the upper or the lower torso. So either way, it's going to clip one way or another. So it is just a little uh, handy little thing you can do. So the last thing we need to go over is all of the settings of the rig. To access all of these settings, you want to select your rig change into pose mode click in on your keyboard and that should pop up the side menu here select the settings cog at the top and then under item and then under properties you'll have all of the different settings right here for you to access there's of course these stars as well which all have their own different settings this star right here is obviously modifying all of these settings of this arm this star here is for this leg this leg etc etc this right here the settings cog at the top is just general settings for the whole rig the reason i have two rigs is that they actually all have slightly different settings but starting off here with the blocky rig settings cog at the top we have flip bone paribus the creator of the starter rigs explained that this is just kind of for animation if you want to flip your rig around type of thing this is what he said right here on screen it just lets you rotate the entire rig without actually rotating the actual root of the bone so yeah it's good for animation if you've done animation you might know what it is for next is of course head type which you can see if you just increase this by one number so if i increase this to two you can see it changes it to a man head if we go to three it changes it to whatever head that is uh and there's only three on some of the other rigs they have different head types you can get but that's pretty handy if you do want to switch the head types around less lag of course it does exactly that it just makes it a bit less laggy if you want to enable that the next two settings here subdivision render and subdivision viewport are just for how many subdivisions the rig has so if i just zoom into the arm here and this applies to the whole rig but if we actually just look at the corner of the arm here if i set the subdivision for the viewport to zero you'll see it's super straight and pointy of course if you 
then increase that to one, it adds a subdivision, makes it a little bit more rounded. If you increase it to two, it makes it even more rounded. And then three is the max where it's completely rounded on the edges. And then of course, there's just those settings for both render and viewport. So the viewport is just this right here. What you're seeing, what your, your kind of workspace that you work in is the viewport. And the render is of course, just your actual render. So if I set this to zero in the render, it'll still show up rounded because the subdivision render here is set to two. If I set this to zero, it'll now show up pointy in the renders. I can of course set this to three, so now it's super rounded in the viewport, but then in the render it's set to zero. So it'll still be pointy in the actual render. Hopefully that makes sense. Usually you want to keep this quite low. One should be enough. In fact, if your computer isn't that good, you can set the viewport one to just zero and then make sure it's set to two or three or one or two or three for the actual render. That'll just make it a little bit less laggy, except for when it's actually rendering. And the last thing is the torso bendiness. This torso bendiness is only available on the actual blocky rig all of the rest of the rigs you will see if i switch over to the boy rig here you'll see that that doesn't have the torso bendiness but essentially what this torso bendiness does is it's exactly what it sounds like if you rotate the torso here if i go ahead and select the settings cog and we look at the torso bent from the side if i set that to zero you can see there's absolutely no bendiness at all that could be pretty nice if you're doing r6 animations and stuff or even just r6 renders at all because of course r6 rigs wouldn't bend one doesn't do anything but two you'll see it gives it two little cuts across there where it's now sectioned into three pieces bending along the torso then you can just increase it as much as you want tens the default and for some reason you can go all the way up to ten thousand. so that'll have a whole lot of bends that's probably really laggy especially if you don't have that good of a computer so that's the sort of setting you just want to leave at 10 you don't really need to mess around with it and now we'll move on to the settings for both of the arms click on one of the stars and it'll be once again under item and then properties in the end menu on the side first up the fancy wrist i wasn't fully able to figure out what this is for but i think it is once again just for like animations or it's for some sort of thing it just makes the wrists stay pointed down like that you can't actually rotate them or anything like that so i'm not 100 sure the use case for it if i can find out exactly what this fancy wrist does i'll put it in a part of the video or i'll put it on screen right now setting is the IK slash FK switch. Now this IK FK switch is also on the legs and this is one of the most important settings you'll be using with the robot starter rigs. And the reason for that is if I actually enable this here, it'll give us access to this bone right here, which you'll see if I actually move this around by using the move tool, or you can just click G to move stuff, you'll see that it moves the arm just like that. So it's really useful because as you can see, it does just let you move only the arm, or sorry, only the hand and the whole rest of the arm moves as well. And then there's also this little cube that you can use to kind of bend the arm you'll see if i bend it there uh, and then we move it it's kind of locked onto that position so that can be something you might want to use but i don't really use this cube and stuff to rotate it around too much but yeah that is a really really handy setting and it's a really good one to know but most of the time i don't think people use it on the arms they mainly use it on the legs so in fact we'll just move on to the leg settings right here which it's the same thing as before instead of it being fancy wrists we've got fancy feet which you can see when i bend the legs the feet are just going to say pointing down and it's the same thing with the ik switches if you actually go ahead and now move the torso like this with that ik enabled you'll see it bends the legs pretty nice now the reason we got this boy rig here is because this boy rig actually has a few extra settings and that is mainly on the arms here which you will see we have fist control and finger bones and that of course revolves around the hands which the blocky rig doesn't have so first of all finger bones this is going to be by default enabled on the next version of the starter rigs i'm pretty sure but for now a lot of people didn't know they uh, the, these rigs actually had finger bones but you can simply just switch it on right there and it'll give it finger bones which you can then come in and pose them up however you'd like which that's pretty cool but there's actually one a lot of people don't know about and that is fist control fist control is really really handy because what it lets you do is it just enables this little ball right here so when you then click on this ball this is a whole nother setting here which is fist and you might already be able to guess what this does it literally bends the hand into like a fist setting it to 0.1 you've got a nice little fist there opening it right up you can bend the fingers back and it's a really really cool little setting to use of course if you're trying to make them hold like a sword or something instead of needing to bend each bone into the right place this
this fist control is really really handy for doing that and then there's just the fancy wrist and ik fk switch we went over before but on the legs there's also this one extra setting here the toe ik so the toes here you can see just let you kind of bend the toes which is pretty nice toe ik just means you can bend it around like this which is a bit um odd i'd say i don't really use toes much i don't think many people do use toes but i mean toes are there if you do want to use the toes for whatever reason and you of course get access to the ik switch for them as well of course this wouldn't be a full starter rigs tutorial course if i didn't show you how to actually pose the rigs it's simply just selecting the rig here and going into pose mode then you can use all of the different tools you have on the side here so the move tool if you want to move around the arms and stuff for whatever reason rotating it of course and then just messing around with all these different settings you can go up to orientation at the top here and you can change this to local and that'll change the rotation tool so it's local there's of course this bone here which kind of stretches the torso which could be i don't know maybe that could be useful of course there's stretching the head as well and yeah i think you guys already kind of know the idea of posing and how to pose everything and that's actually pretty much it make sure to like subscribe if this video did help you understand how to use the starter rigs because these are very very powerful rigs and yeah when the next version comes out i'll remake this tutorial showing you all the new settings and everything there is uh to offer but as for now i hope this video was helpful if it was make sure to like subscribe join the gfx runner discord server first link in the description below as of right now we got a two-week roblox gfx christmas event you can win up to two thousand robux just by making some christmas roblox gfx and entering it into the contest it ends about on christmas day check out gfxrunner.com for completely free roblox gfx assets and i will see you all next time peace out